Last week I told a story about my maternal grandfather. My paternal grandfather had a very different life. He had a great deal of sorrow in his life. There was very little love in the family as he was growing up. And he saw a lot of suffering. He was involved with the British Army in the days of the Irish Rebellion. He was captured and tied to a chair in the town square and people abused him and he almost was killed once uh, someone came at him with a straight razor in the, in the Glasgow train station. He saw a lot of suffering in the First World War. He was at Passchendaele. He was wounded there. It was a terrible time in the First World War on the front. And um, then their little baby girl got a brain tumor and died. So there was a lot of suffering. And uh, so when we look at people and we see perhaps that the hard road has made them hard, let's not be too harsh in our own judgments. We have no idea what some people have gone through. But nonetheless, my grandmother, who was a saint, if ever there was one, and my father, who was raised as an only child after the death of his little sister, they somehow overcame all of the negativity and the criticism and the verbal abuse that they suffered. My father never remembers his dad telling him he loved him. It was a very, very different home. And yet, as I say, through it all, my grandmother and my father were purified as gold tried in the fire. And anyone who knew my grandmother and my father knew that the grace of God had triumphed in spite of all of the difficulties that they faced in their family life. And there are two little incidents that so impressed my soul as a little child, and I never forgot them. And I just want to tell you those stories. But before I do, let me read to you two verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Verses 8 and 11 say, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in all good works. You see that? That at in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in all good work. And then he goes on to say in verse 11, you will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. If they're not twins, they're at least cousins. Generosity and gratitude. A thankful heart very often leads to a sharing hand. There's something about this sense of, of God's goodness to us that leads us to realize we can afford to care for others too because our cup runs over, because he gives us exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Well, these two little incidents. I was just a, a little fellow. Back in those days, they didn't talk about seat belts, no one would imagine such a thing. The way it worked was the children sort of stood on the back seat if they wanted to, and and uh, when the brakes went on, mom and dad swung their arm around and caught the children as they headed toward the front windshield. Or perhaps the children lay on the on the back, up by the, the glass, the rear glass. I was riding along in the car with my father, and there were some other people in the car, and I remember exactly the spot. My father had a, a mid-1950s Buick, two-tone green. Um, the, it was like big living room sofas inside, brocade, green brocade. And as we were riding along, he was telling this story. And it was a very sad story. And I was just a little boy. I may have been in first grade, kindergarten, kindergarten probably. I don't think I was in first grade yet because we moved to a different part of town. But I re remember exactly the spot where Niagara Street crosses over the Queen Elizabeth Highway that my father came to the sad, this conclusion of this sad story. And I was just a little fellow, but I, I started to weep 
And as I began to weep, I, I was ashamed of my tears. I didn't want anyone else to see. And I kind of hid my face over looking out the glass window. And my father in the rear view mirror, he saw what was happening. And I can still hear his words to this day. He had a fairly thick Scottish accent in those days. But he said to me, Ah, son, may you always have a tender heart. Ah, son, may you always have a tender heart. And then the other story, my grandmother, as I say, had a very difficult life. Um, my grandfather never seemed to quite get in gear after he came to Canada. He always had these ideas that never panned out. And my grandmother basically scrubbed other people's floors and looked after other people's children to get a little money to buy groceries. And she lived a very, very hard life. But on Fridays, she would get the bus and come over to our home. We lived in a different part of town. And she would babysit us and allow my mom and dad to go out on a Friday night date. And uh, we three children spent time, uh, quite a bit of time with my grandmother Nicholson. And, and uh, when it came time to go to bed, I, I'll never forget, she would get us down on our knees by the side of the bed. And we would be allowed to pray. And then she would pray in her beautiful, soft Scottish brogue. She would pray and very often she would include these words in her prayer. And Lord, may these children always have enough to be generous. I recall when I first began preaching and my grandmother would come to me and she'd squeeze maybe a five or ten dollar bill into my hand. And her glasses were all taped together, you know. She, I don't think she'd had a new dress in a long time. And, uh, and I'd say, oh, Grandma, look, you keep the money. I, I don't need it right now. You keep it. You need it. And with a little twinkle in her eye, she'd say, well, now, son, I'm just investing in a little real estate in heaven. She was always generous. Even though she had so little, she was always generous. May God help us in this day of increasing hardness and critical spirit and sharp tongues, and people who are quick to be angry about some of the silliest little things. And everybody has a strong opinion about everything. May we be characterized by generosity and gratitude, by having a thankful heart, and by having a giving heart. And if we do, what does it say? That our generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. It comes into our lives. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. It comes in his grace. It goes through us as generosity. And it goes back to God as gratitude. <laughs>